Do your movies look like? Do your soundtracks sound like this? Or like this? If so, you need this. A focus leader. First, set your lens so that these lines are sharp and clear on all parts of the screen. Now, set the volume control on your projector. The sound level should be adjusted all sections of the room. You are Pan American Travel Adventure. Northeastern coast of Australia, 1,200 miles of coral reefs and islands. This is the Great Barrier Reef, a vast underwater chain of coral mountains which touch the surface of the ocean. Here as a splash of gleaming sand. There as a tree-clad island. But usually it's just lazy pattern of the reef. More than 600 miles south, but still on the coast, is Sydney, Australia's largest and oldest city, home of more than two and one quarter million Australians, and site of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, the largest single span bridge in the world. A busy and beautiful city, which might come as something of a surprise to those who still think of Australia as the lost continent of the sleepy South Seas. Winter in the Northern Hemisphere is summer in the South, and the sunny climate of cities like Sydney has bred the relaxed, informal atmosphere so typical of Australia. Sydney is the capital city of the premier state, New South Wales. About 200 miles farther south and inland is Canberra, federal capital and site of the Federal House of Parliament. Canberra is little more than 30 years old, so its buildings are modern and colorful, like this modern apartment block. Or the striking copper-domed Academy of Science with its arches and its moat. Before Canberra became the federal capital, that honor was held by Melbourne, capital of the southern state of Victoria. Melbourne is generally considered far more sedate than sunny Sydney, but there are times when it lets down its hair. It seems as if the entire population of almost two million has turned out to witness the annual festival of Mumba, a native word meaning, let's get together and whoop it up. Australia's many beaches are always a major attraction. So we've flown north again to Sydney to watch some of these amphibians at one of their favorite sports, skiing on the waves.
Ask any Australian about it. This is the supreme thrill of sport, to engage the green waves in single-handed combat, with the white strip of beach as the objective. The voluntary surf life-saving clubs of Australia number about 10,000 men and women who patrol the large metropolitan beaches to keep a watchful eye on the safety of the swimmers. On summer weekends, they parade at carnivals like this and compete in all the various techniques of rescue and first aid. thrill of the day comes when the boats take to the water, no matter what the weather is like. which are used in mass rescue work, play a starring role in the ever-popular beach carnivals. Without plenty of nerve and muscle, you don't rate a place in an Australian surf boat. The mariners of Sydney Harbour love their sailboats too. But there seems a quiet pastime when compared with what goes on at the thundering surf beaches. Far from the glittering playground of the surf, Australia goes about its main business of providing the world with nearly half its wool. When you run more than 150 million sheep, as Australians do, you need some help. The canny little sheepdog provides it. You can almost see him thinking how to outwit those bundles of wool. And of course, he does. The kangaroo is Australia's national emblem, but the koala is perhaps even more beloved. These albino kangaroos are extremely rare, almost a museum piece. So koala is going higher up his tree for a better look at them. The Australian Aborigine still lives in much the same way as his ancestors did thousands of years ago. It's party time with white clay for makeup. Choose your own hairstyle for the dance. The performers really get the message. And sometimes it's a little difficult to remember it's all part of the act. Twelve hundred miles away in New Zealand, Australia's sister nation in the British Commonwealth, one finds the ancient fascinating culture of the Maoris. These Maori girls in native dress are demonstrating the intricate poi dance, which is performed with small fiber balls to an accompaniment of singing. <laughs> Oh, 
Christ Church, home for 200,000 of the nation's two and one half million people, is the southernmost city of New Zealand. This is a country of clear, snow-fed lakes and streams, which provide some of the world's finest trout. The trout follow the streams to the lakes, and the fishermen follow the trout to some very gratifying catches. Both brown and rainbow trout are fished in these picturesque settings, where three, four, and five pound fish are quite common. In some of the rivers, a very fine fish called the Quinnet Salmon is taken, up to 30 pounds in weight. In all, New Zealand fairly qualifies as a fisherman's dream of heaven. Prehistoric rivers of ice creep down between New Zealand's towering peaks, but very modern ideas make short work of a journey into the heart of the snowlands, where even the plains wear skis. New Zealand has a remarkable diversity of landscape. Plains, downs and broad valleys, expansive tracts of hills and mountains, numerous rivers and many lakes. Here on the South Island, the Southern Alps stretches from end to end of the island, with Mount Cook, the highest point, at 12,349 feet. Milford Sound in the South Island of New Zealand is an incredibly beautiful marriage of sea and mountains, a view found in few other places in the world. These placid streams wind for miles between cliffs towering high above the water, an enduring symbol of the grandeur of beautiful New Zealand. <laughs> 